Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever you're doing, I'm having my coffee and I just wanted to say hello and pop on here to introduce you to this great interview that I just did with my friend Mindy, who was a previous referral of mine, actually from late in the year, uh, last year, 2019. And she has a great story and she just offers a lot of suggestions and you know perspective from being an Asian teacher. She is Canadian. I'll let her introduce herself, but I hope you enjoy this. And the reason why I made the video is because I get a lot of people asking, you know, does company XYZ hire uh, teachers of color? Does VIP Kid hire older teachers? Um, can I still build up a full schedule if I have an Asian face and not a white face? The answer is always yes, yes, yes. Well, I can certainly speak for VIP Kid and say that it is. I know that there are companies out there that are discriminatory in some of their practices, but I can assure you that um, the companies I work for are not, and I certainly would not be working for them if they were. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Tim from OnlineTeacherDude.com. I help teachers teach online, and I help online teachers grow their business and make money. If you're interested in that, I have two freebies on my website. One is if you are just interested in branding yourself as a teacher and learning how to make more income. It's called Three Ways to Brand Yourself as an Online ESL Teacher. I would love you to check it out. I will link that up here. And the other freebie is if you're interested in recruiting, I have a guide on how to find referrals. I get a lot of people asking me, where do you find all those referrals? You said you hit you know, this number last year, um, which was over 200 hired teachers. How do you find them? So I put my seven best places with some really great tips on what to do when you're in that space and, and how to find those referrals. If you wanna sign up for both freebies, you need to use two different email addresses. Um, but if you're having trouble with that, please reach out and I will make sure to add you to both lists manually if you have difficulties. Anyway, here's Mindy. Hey, Mindy. Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thanks. Thanks so much for doing this. I thought it would be a really great perspective for um, folks to see what your experience was like, teach, has been like teaching online. So I've got some questions for you and I'm gonna kind of just go through them. So thanks so much for okay. being willing to answer and share your experiences as an Asian teacher teaching uh, on, uh, <laughs> an, on online ESL platforms. <laughs> Um, no worries. So first, yeah, just tell us about yourself, uh, where you're from, where mm -hmm. you teach online, what you do, all that kind of good stuff. Awesome. Okay, so hi, Tim's viewers. <laughs> I'm Mindy. So my YouTube channel, my name is Asian English, ugh, Asian English teacher. Haha, -ha, get the name. <laughs> Too funny. So yeah, Asian English teacher. Um, so I was born in Canada and raised in Canada, so awesome. I'm Canadian. Yeah. But yes, I have, my parents are born in China and then they came at a very young age, so I was born in Canada. So okay. pretty much I, I went to school and I went to university in Canada. Awesome, and so your parents uh, were born in China and they migrated to Canada mm -hmm. and now, and yeah. you were born in Canada and you've lived in Canada your whole life. Yeah, pretty awesome. much. I didn't even step foot in Asia till I was like 22. Okay. So wow. I yeah. was I grew up in Canada. I didn't even travel anywhere. I didn't really know much about you know going to other countries and seeing all these sites. Right. So so yeah, neat. It was really interesting. Good. Have you ever been to China? I have. You have. I actually have. Yeah. yeah. Ah, you had told me before you lived in Hong Kong for a while, right? Yeah, so um, maybe 10 years ago, I went to Hong Kong and I actually taught English there for eight years. Oh, wow. Neat. Yeah. Awesome. I worked for the government, like the Education Bureau. Okay. So I was the only native English teacher in that school for a primary school. Oh, wow. Very cool. Yeah. Neat. What so a, I was just teaching, teaching um, grade one to three in speaking okay. English, like English conversation. Okay. Oh, awesome. Neat. Yeah. yeah, I love talking to people that have like been overseas. I mean, as you know, I live in Asia and I just love the lifestyle over here. And um, yeah, uh, it was it's only really gonna... awesome. Yeah, for sure. 
So tell us about your background in Chinese. Like, can you read Chinese? Can you write Chinese? Do you speak Mandarin or Cantonese? Like, what's your kind of background in Chinese itself? Or uh, I think it, it's kind of interesting to see how that might help you connect with students or just, you know, in terms of right. how you can relate to, um, to teaching Chinese students. Or do you have no Chinese? Well, my background is very complex, Tim. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when I was a little kid, so before I went to school, I only spoke Chinese because my, my parents spoke to me, right? So yeah. we would speak in Cantonese. So okay. they speak Cantonese in Hong Kong. So right. I don't know any Mandarin. So that's what they speak in China. So yeah. I would speak Cantonese. So when I went to school, I actually had to go to ESL. I didn't no know a drop of English. And then I think I was at ESL for six months. And then I pretty much forgot my Chinese. Yep. So wow. I, was fluent, I was fluent in English and then I just forgot my Chinese. And then um, when I was growing up and I grew, uh, I grew up in Markham, Ontario. Yep. So there's a lot of Chinese people that live there. Yeah. So I actually started remembering my Chinese again because my friends would be speaking a lot of Chinese and they would bring me to karaoke and I would learn how to read the words from karaoke actually oh, wow. and listening to the songs. So I know how to read a little bit of Chinese, like the basic stuff, you know? Yep. yep. Like I can read food. I can read like sappy love song lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> the important things, right? Stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. So um, yeah, I know how to speak Cantonese, but it's not like um, very strong, like it's conversational. Okay. If you were to tell me to um, listen to the news and if they're talking about stocks or investments, I don't know that vocabulary. Okay. But I mean like everyday conversation, I'm okay with. Yep. Awesome. So yeah. it just, and with Mandarin, I, I can understand a little because sometimes they sound similar, like yeah. same, same, but different. Right. Right. There you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I just kind of guess what they're saying. There are so some similarities. Actually, yeah. yeah um, from a VIP kid, when I hear the kids speaking in Chinese or when they're talking to their parents before mm -hmm. the lesson starts, mm -hmm. I can kind of pick up on what they're saying. Awesome. Awesome. That must be really neat because you can kind of, um, yeah, catch. Uh, I think a lot of teachers would love to be able to hear and understand what the parents are saying, you know, it's actually before really a class. cool because most of the time the parents are just prepping their kids on what to say. So the parents are really nice. I actually hear them say, remember her name is teacher Mindy. Right. She lives in Canada. Oh, yeah. she's a, she's Chinese. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'm yeah. Like, oh, are they talking about me? <laughs> <laughs> they just see the Asian face, right? She's Chinese. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so I'm sure they watch my intro video and then they know that I'm Asian. So may, sometimes I think that maybe if they see me that it wouldn't mm -hmm. be as scary because for really young kids, I don't think they've ever seen, you know, an American or a Canadian if they've only lived in China, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I would think that it's an advantage because it's more of a familiar face, like people that they're used to seeing as their teachers, right? Yes, yes, exactly. That's what I like to think anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with you. I agree with you. Uh, I think it's becoming more normal, like, you know, in terms of, you know, kids kind of having had experiences with foreigners and Westerners, but yes, yeah, mm -hmm. still it, it for many of them. You know, if you could kind yeah. of put yourself in their shoes for that little trial student that you're getting for the first time, uh -huh. you may be the very first Westerner that they've ever interacted with. It's just yeah, incredible. So I don't get a lot of little kids crying in my lessons. Do you? Uh, I haven't in a while, but I definitely have had before. Scary it's white. Like, oh, who's that scary white guy? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I put on my really angry face when I uh, have the little the little trials. Seriously, I would be scared. <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh, now. You said you work for VIP Kid, which I know because. Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't Where tell else do you. you work for? So I work for VIP Kid. See, you can tell I'm using the fingers to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> VIP Kid, Go Go Kid, and Q Kid as well. Oh wow! So three online companies. So, you no, know, when I yeah, was I just. With you, when I was working with you to get through the hiring process, was VIP Kid your first uh, company? Yeah. You had you, yeah, VIP Kid was your first one. 
Yeah, so I started with VIP Kid. I actually started in 2016. I worked for VIP Kid for oh, two right. contracts. Yeah, right. and then I, I got busy because I started my own business. So I just stopped and I didn't know that I could just renew my contract and then yeah. not open classes. So I didn't know that. So I quit. Okay. And then um, last year when I contacted you, which was December 2019, that's yeah. my second time being with VIP Kid again. Right. So it's April now. It's about my fifth month with VIP Kid. My gosh, has it been that long, Mindy? That's crazy. Time flies. I know. You're about I'm to get your second my contract. second contract. <laughs> wow, that is wild. So I yeah. wanted to ask you some questions about um, just your experiences as an Asian teacher and, you know, with uh -huh. your um, background um, and you know how that sort of impacts, helps, doesn't help mm -hmm. your bookings and things. Because I do have teachers that ask, you know, I'm Asian. Can I still apply to these online mm -hmm. companies that are focused on generally, you know, uh, Chinese kids with a with a North American teacher? And you right. know, they say to me, "Well, I'm not blonde and blue eyes, and I'm I don't have white skin." And mm -hmm. you know, are the parents going to still want to choose me? So. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's working well for you. So I wanted to just bring you on and ask you questions about that. Like, were you ever hesitant to teach Chinese kids online because of your background or because of you being mm -hmm. Asian? Did you ever think that that would come into play or was it just a non-issue? Uh, honestly, it's been a non-issue for me cool. because in my head, I'm Canadian. <laughs> totally. And... I, I know I look Asian, but I'm like, I'm very non-Asian sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So in my mind, it wasn't really an issue. Um, I can tell you Asian teachers out there that I am fully booked right now, um, even despite what's going on with the virus and having a, a whole bunch of teachers applying yeah. and everyone That's complaining awesome. that they're not able to get any bookings. Like I feel for everybody, but yeah. to be honest, I'm still consistently booked. And That's great. sometimes I get some cancellations, but I always get rebooked. So I'm quite happy about that. It did take me that long to build actually. It took me like by my second month, I was already, I've doubled or tripled my paycheck like every time. Oh wow, so, That's so good to hear. Yeah. I, hadn't really, I hadn't really asked you lately how you know, how the bookings were going. So tell me from the beginning, was there a while when you weren't booked? Did it take some time uh -huh. to build up? And would you say you're 100% booked now after a few months? Um, I'm not 100% booked be because I opened some weird slots, you know, mm -hmm. like for Eastern time, I opened some evening slots, like Monday evenings. Yeah. Those don't get booked really often. So those ones I have holes, but... Yeah. For sure, my mornings, like the PPTs are booked solid. Um, okay, let me start from the beginning in yeah. a quick way. Yeah. Um, my first month, I, I had 25 classes, which okay. is not bad for a new teacher, right? Yeah, like, no, that's really good for the first around month. there. Yeah. So that was in December. I think that the kids were going on holidays and stuff, so they mm -hmm. didn't have a stable schedule. So I did think it was kind of slow, but whatever. And mm -hmm. then the second month, I just... The first month, I just taught really wonderful lessons, smiled yeah. all the time, had all yeah. the props, I laminated everything, I just yeah. did all my certs, you know, the usual thing. Sure. So I saw that the second month, um, my numbers doubled, so my paycheck doubled, and I hit over 45 classes. I just hit 46. Oh, that's awesome. I'm so happy. I know. Yeah, you get that like, extra. Please, <laughs> please, short notice, please, short notice, and right. then I had three and then it bumped me up and I got that extra $45 so okay. my paycheck was like $500 awesome and then the third month I I tripled my income so fantastic I was pretty happy about that and then this is gonna be my fourth month I mm -hmm. think and I've excelled those numbers as well so I'm just like aiming That's higher so cool. and higher and yeah. I understand like I know that um, right now it's a hard time there's tons of teachers but I feel like if you hang in there and you give really solid lessons and mm -hmm. you just connect with the student like mm -hmm. for me I try to understand what they like what they think is funny 
what they can understand. So I yep. keep the language really simple. Like the yep. little kids really love me. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm so tired to teach at 5 a.m. and going. Oh, I know. This is a dog. Woo, I know. Woo, woo, woo. You know. I don't. I don't honestly, I, I don't know how you guys do it because I don't have to do that living in Asia, and I'm so grateful that I because I'm just not a morning person like that. When you uh, have to do it, you will do it. You just do it, right? Yeah, I bet. Yeah, I'm just used to it. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, but pretty much like I'm pretty happy. Um, I wouldn't say that because I have an Asian face that I don't get the same chances. Like people would think that I think at first they would mm -hmm. be worried. Oh, I might not be as popular. But mm -hmm. I mean, that's the same thing for you as a guy, right? Yes. Yep. Totally. Yeah. Some guys will think, you know, well, I'm a male. I'm not a female. There's so many yeah. female teachers. Will this work exactly. out for me? I think that like, if you kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm sort of in a niche category of being a male mm -hmm. online teacher, I think, I mean, it always used to be like that, but there's more of us now teaching that, right. you know, that, it, that um, I think we have really high booking rates, to be honest with you. And I get a lot yeah. of older teachers as well who say, oh, you know, I'm in my seventies, like will VIP kid or company a a hire me? There yeah. really is a market. Yeah. So yeah. I, I really appreciate you. Um, sharing that because I think um, it will be an encouragement for for lots of teachers yeah, um, and so I love I your story like about the bookings too it just hang in there you know I feel for everyone too but if, yeah. there there is room for you and there are students uh -huh. that are going to find you it just might take you a little longer um, but yeah, just work, work sure. hard give it's, great classes mm -hmm. it's not going to happen overnight and you really do have to work at it it's not something that oh this is just a side hustle it's very easy like I have to put my blood, sweat, and tears into retaining this one student, but yeah. I'm going to do it. And I'm going to give like 10 more great classes just because they're on my regulars list. It doesn't yeah. mean anything. They can drop me. Right. Totally. But I just, I keep sending out the cards. I yeah. keep writing personal feedback and I'm yeah. always connecting with the students. So I feel like no matter if I'm Asian or, you know, if I'm a guy or girl or whatever, it doesn't matter as long as you commit, commit yeah. to it. What a good message. Cause I think that's so true. You know, it's about giving great classes, being a great mm -hmm. teacher. The online teaching world and especially VIP Kid is so diverse and you know yeah, just totally. so welcoming to everyone. I mean, you yeah. you know the amount of people that I've helped get hired of different backgrounds and different uh -huh. ages and you know it, there's room for everyone. And if you work hard and you love kids, yeah. it's a great job for you. Cool. Totally. Like even though there's over ten, like a hundred thousand teachers, mm -hmm. there's a lot more students too, right? Yes. <laughs> so exactly. They're there's both always somebody growing. for you. Yeah. Yep. Now I wanted to ask you about, um, we talked a little bit about the Chinese in the classroom and you don't speak Mandarin, which is kind of what our students speak, but do mm -hmm. you use, um, any Chinese or do you feel like um, if you did speak Mandarin, do you think that that would be an issue or would you be wanting to speak more Chinese or would you kind of shy away from that because you wouldn't want to, you know, kind of speak it just because you have an, uh, you know, you have an Asian face? <clears throat> I'm glad you asked me that too. <laughs> I, I actually like to read the situation. Yeah. So what I mean by that is if I see that the kid is really struggling and they don't know what to do, but also I need to know is the parent beside them and yeah. I would assess the parent. Are they a supportive parent or are they a parent that's like really strict and make yeah. sure that, you know, they get every single word correct or every single pronunciation correct. Mm -hmm. And I'll just see how it is. If I, if I meet a parent that seems a bit more strict, I don't think I would reveal at all that I know Chinese, right? Right. But if I hear that the parent is constantly like speaking Chinese, trying to feed the kid answers, if the kid is asking a question to the parents, mm -hmm. like, is this the correct word? And then I'll be like, doya, doya. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. That's like, right, right. Yeah. And they'll be like, who? Huh? <laughs> and I was like, what? what's wrong? <laughs> and then they'll say something in Chinese and then yeah. I'll be like, what you know? What you know? <laughs> See, that's like, so funny. And the parents are, and the kids are shocked. Whereas they're shocked when I speak Chinese because clearly, yeah. Um, yeah. and I don't speak a lot, but uh, minimally, but I would think 
that they would not, you know, that they would kind of, I was going to ask you, do parents ask you anything in Chinese or ask if you speak Chinese or wonder about your background? Well, I think my Chinese is so horrible that okay. they actually believe me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it's like hao. teaching you Chinese. Yeah, <laughs> right. exactly. I have that accent like, ni hao ma. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds terrible probably, right? Yeah. But honestly, I'm just exaggerating the accent. I do I don't speak Chinese like that. I do know yeah. how to speak conversational Chinese, just not Mandarin, right? Yeah. yeah. But I'm just like I'm just playing along like, oh, yeah. I, they're teaching me. So they actually give me encouragement. They'll be like, very good teacher. And then <laughs> they feel more comfortable with me because I'm trying to speak their language. And I feel for them because I'm like, it's yeah. so hard to learn another language. And they're doing such a good job. So yeah. they try to teach me one word. I'll ask them, oh, cat, how do you say cat in Chinese? And they'll teach me. Yeah. And then I'll say it in a funny accent and the kids will go, oh, good, good. <laughs> and one kid even offered me a star. And I was oh, like, that's so oh. cute. Yeah. yeah, I think so it's like, just such a wonderful bridge to even if you, you know, for anyone that's watching that, you know, doesn't know Chinese, if you can learn a few words, it's so helpful and so fun. And it, it just totally makes the kids... Is feel at ease and you know mm -hmm. they love i obviously you know not don't make a focus of it in the lesson where you're spending most of the lesson learning chinese exactly. or speaking chinese um companies don't mm -hmm. want that but the odd word or so has never gotten me into trouble and it really has only helped my exactly profile exactly yeah. i was gonna say if i I do speak Chinese. It's not like full on sentences or giving yeah. instruction in Chinese. I just say words here and there just to show like I'm learning. I'm a student of it. Yeah. So I never give instructions. Give us an example. What would you say? What, what, what would be a phrase you could say in Chinese um, to, um, to help us? I would just, I would just say, I, I don't really give them a phrase though. I would just yeah. like if, there was a vocabulary they didn't know. Oh, yeah. for example, level one, no, no, level two, unit one or two, like very early on. Oh, I don't teach those. This... Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, they Sometimes teach Sometimes like, I have the odd time. They're really little. You're then. so yeah. lucky. <laughs> yeah, they I used to, but. subjects, right? So they yes. teach English, Chinese, math, music book, and uh, art book, right? Yes. So when they pull the Chinese book, they say Chinese and I go, I can speak Chinese. And they're like, huh? Uh, they're low level, right? Yeah. And I go, watch it thou. And then yeah. they're like, huh? <laughs> and I was like, Wa Zhong Wen. That yeah. means I speak Chinese, but it's a horrible accent. Yeah. And yeah. then the mom and the, the student is like, oh. She knows how to speak Chinese. <laughs> like she whispers to her mom. Right. And then I'm like, I just pretend like I know what they're saying, but I really don't. Yeah. See, I'm so surprised. I thought parents would have totally wanted or almost expected that you would have some Chinese, you know, more Chinese than you do. But that's great that they don't. They really don't, you know, they're not sort of putting people into boxes in terms of like, yeah. oh, this person's got an Asian face, so they're going to be able to speak Chinese or, you know, they're going to have an Asian style of teaching or whatever mm -hmm. it is. They, you know, VIP Kid obviously only hires North Americans. Um, it doesn't matter what your background is or your race or anything. So yeah. yeah well, cool. I was just telling you an example of my lower level kids. For my higher level kids, some of them would ask me, "Teacher, do you know how to speak Chinese?" And then I'll tell them the truth. I'll say, "I know a little bit." Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then I'll just say, "Oh, can you teach me?" The this word, if it is something they're struggling with, I ask them to teach me the word back mm -hmm. so that they would remember the English word. Like, mm -hmm. I find that it sticks in their head. Yeah, so absolutely. They're, absolutely. They're pretty cool. They're like, oh, you know Chinese. And they're really encouraging. So I like that. It's so yeah. sweet. Yeah. I, I use it occasionally with young students if they don't know how to say, if they don't know what I'm asking, how old they are, you know, mm -hmm. I'll ask Ni Ji Shui. Um, or I don't you're... even know that. How do you say how old are you? Ni ji shui ma, or ni, I don't think the ma is at the end. Ni ji shui, ni ji shui. Oh, so, um, oh thank you. I'll use that one. Shui, liu shui, qi shui, ba shui. And then they say, oh, liu shui, six, I am six. <laughs> so, nice. 
Yeah. All right, I'm taking that from you. The white guy <laughs> teaching the Asian girl Chinese, right? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I told hey. you, I'm not Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> this was so cool. Thanks so much for chatting. Oh, plug your channels. And you have a YouTube channel and Instagram. Where can we find you, Mindy? Yeah, so just look under Asian English teacher. Yeah. I'll awesome. send you my link. But everyone, it would be awesome if you can subscribe to my YouTube because I currently have 11 subscribers. <laughs> ah, let's get you boosted up then. <laughs> but everyone's got to start somewhere and yeah. I'm going to grow. I believe Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. I love your, yeah, I love your, just your mindset and your positive attitude. I always appreciate Well, whatever that. you work on, it's going to happen, right? Yep. So hang in there. Totally. Very, very good. Okay. Very cool. Thanks so much, Mindy. Okay. Thanks, everyone. See you next time. Bye, Mindy. Bye, guys. Thank you, Tim. Thank you so much, Mindy, for coming on and um, letting me ask you some questions and pick your brain. And I hope that this is helpful for folks out there. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video if you did watch all the way through and uh, please leave us a comment below. Uh, you know, does this resonate with your perspective? Um, do you have anything else to add? I would love to hear from you. I'm sure Mindy would also love to hear from you. I'm going to put her information below as well where you can find her on YouTube and Instagram as the Asian English teacher. <laughs> so cool. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody and whatever you're doing, make it a great day. See you later. Thank you.